Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on respiration. In today's lecture, we will be talking about respiration, types of respiration, fermentation, structure and function of biological energy currency that is ATP, biological redox reactions and redox potential. First of all, let me give you a brief account of respiration. Respiration, often confused with breathing, is defined as transport of oxygen from outside ear to the cells within tissues and transport of carbon dioxide in opposite direction. In contrast to the biochemical definition of respiration, which refers to cellular respiration as a set of metabolic reactions and processes that take place in the cells of organisms to convert biochemical energy from nutrients into adenosine triphosphate and then release waste products. The reactions involved in respiration are catabolic reactions, which break larger molecules into smaller ones, releasing the energy as they break high energy bonds. Respiration is one of the key ways a cell gains useful energy to fuel cellular activity. Chemically, cellular respiration is considered as an exothermic redox reaction the overall reaction is broken into many smaller ones when it occurs in the body, most of which are redox reactions themselves. Dear friends, depending on the availability of oxygen, cellular respiration can be divided into two categories, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Now let us discuss aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is the main means by which both plants and animals utilize energy in the form of organic compounds that were previously created through photosynthesis. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen in order to generate energy that is ATP. Although carbohydrates, fats and proteins can all be processed and consumed as reactant. It is the preferred method of pyruvate breakdown in glycolysis and requires pyruvate that enters the mitochondrion in order to be fully oxidized by the Krebs cycle. The product of this process is energy in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate by substrate level phosphorylation NADH and FADH2. The reducing potential of NADH and FADH2 is converted to more ATP through an electron transport chain with oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor. Most of the ATP produced by aerobic cellular respiration is made by oxidative phosphorylation. Aerobic metabolism is up to 15 times more efficient than anaerobic metabolism, which yields two ATPs per molecule of glucose. They share the initial pathway of glycolysis, but aerobic metabolism continues with Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. The post-glycolytic reactions take place in the mitochondria in eukaryotic cells and in the cytoplasm in prokaryotic cells. Let's now talk about anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is used by some microorganisms in which neither oxygen nor pyruvate or pyruvate derivative is the final electron acceptor. Rather, an inorganic acceptor such as sulfur is used. Yeast and muscle cells are examples which can respire anaerobically for a short time. Dear friends, the organisms following in this mode of respiration fall into two categories. Number one, obligate anaerobes and number two, facultative anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes are the organisms which cannot use the atmospheric oxygen for respiration. Facultative anaerobes are mostly aerobic but can respire anaerobically in the period of oxygen shortage. Dear friends, let's now talk about fermentation. Without oxygen, pyruvate is not metabolized by cellular respiration but 
undergoes a process of fermentation. The pyruvate is not transported into the mitochondrion but remains in the cytoplasm where it is converted to waste products that may be removed from the cell. This serves the purpose of oxidizing the electron carriers so that they can perform glycolysis again and moving the excess pyruvate. Fermentation oxidizes NADH and NAD positive so it can be reused in glycolysis. In the absence of oxygen, fermentation prevents the build of NADH in the cytoplasm and provides NAD positive for glycolysis. The waste product varies in fermentation. It may be alcohol or lactic acid depending on the organism. In alcohol fermentation that occurs in yeast and several bacterial species, pyruvate is converted into ethanol in a two-step pathway. Pyruvate is first decarboxylated with the help of enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase, Mg dipositive and thymine pyrophosphate. This produces acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide from pyruvic acid. Acetaldehyde then accepts hydrogen from NADH2 and is reduced to ethyl alcohol producing oxidized NAD positive. This process is catalyzed by enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. Now lactic acid fermentation, this is carried out by lactic acid bacteria lactobacillus. Some fungi and vertebrate muscle cells pyruvate acid from glycolysis receives hydrogen from NADH2 to, to form lactic acid and NAD positive. Friends, now lactic acid fermentation. This is carried out by lactic acid bacteria lactobacillus some fungi and vertebrate muscle cells. Pyruvic acid from glycolysis receives hydrogen from NADH2 to form lactic acid and NAD positive. The enzyme lactic dehydrogenase catalyzes the reaction in the presence of zinc dipositive and flavin mononucleotide. Carbon dioxide is not produced. NAD positive is reused in glycolysis. Dear friends, before moving, let me address you about the energy currency of the cell that is ATP. To begin with, let's start from the structure of ATP. ATP contains the purine base adenine and the sugar ribose which together form nucleoside adenosine. The basic building blocks used to synthesize ATP are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus which are assembled in a complex that contains the number of subatomic parts equivalent to over 500 hydrogen atoms. One phosphate ester bond and two phosphate anhydride bonds hold the three phosphates and the ribose together. The molecule also contains a glycosidic bond holding the ribose and adenine together. Phosphates are well known high energy molecules, meaning that comparatively high levels of energy are released when the phosphate groups are removed. Actually, the high energy content is not the result of simply the phosphate bond, but the total interaction of all atoms within ATP molecule. Now, let me highlight the important functions of ATP. The ATP is used for many cell functions including transport work, for example moving substance across cell membrane. It is also used for mechanical work, supplying energy needed for muscle contraction. It supplies energy not only to heart muscle for blood circulation and skeletal muscle such as for gross body movement, but also to the chromosomes and flagella to enable them to carry out their money functions. A major role of ATP is in the chemical work, supplying the needed energy to synthesize the multi thousands of types of macromolecules that the cell needs to exist. 
ATP is also used as an on-off switch both to control chemical reactions and to send messages. The shape of protein chains that produce the building blocks and other structures used in life mostly determined by weak chemical bonds that easily broke and remade. These chains can shorten, lengthen and change shape in response to input or withdrawal of energy. The changes in the chains alter the shape of protein and can also alter the function or cause it to become either active or inactive. Dear friends, let's move towards the most important section of this lecture that is biological oxidation reduction reactions. The transfer of phosphoryl groups is a central feature of metabolism. Equally important is another kind of transfer, electron transfer in oxidation reduction reactions. These reactions involve the loss of electrons by one chemical species which is thereby oxidized and the gain of electrons by another which is reduced. The flow of electrons in oxidation reduction reactions is responsible directly or indirectly for all work done by living organisms. In non-photosynthetic organisms, the source of electrons are reduced compounds. In photosynthetic organisms, the initial electron donor is a chemical species excited by the absorption of light. Nitrogen, which is the one of the major elements in the terrestrial and aquatic environments, circulates by many microbially catalyzed redox reactions. In fact, the only non-redox process in the entire nitrogen cycle is ammonia integration with and liberation from nitrogen containing organic matter. The movements of many other elements also involve redox reactions such as carbon, iron and sulfur. The path of electron flow in metabolism is complex. Electrons move from various metabolic intermediates to specialized electron carriers in enzyme catalyzed reactions. The carriers in turn donate electrons to acceptors with higher electron affinities with the release of energy. Cells contain a variety of molecular energy transducers which convert the energy of electron flow into useful work. Finally, let's talk about redox potential, also known as reduction potential or oxidation reduction potential. Redox potential is a measure of tendency of chemical species to acquire electrons and thereby be reduced. Reduction potential is measured in volts or millivolts. Each species has its own intrinsic reduction potential. The more positive the potential, the greater the species affinity for electrons and tendency to be reduced. The standard reduction potential is measured under standard conditions 25 degree centigrade, one molar concentration of each ion participating in the reaction and partial pressure of one atmosphere for each gas that is part of reaction and metal in the pure state. The standard reduction potential is defined relative to a standard hydrogen electrode also called as reference electrode which is arbitrarily given a potential of 0 volts. The potential of overall reaction at standard state can be shown by following equation E0 is equal to E oxidized plus E reduced where E oxidized and E reduced are oxidation half reaction and reduction half reaction respectively. For non-standard states, the reduction potential may be related to standard potential by Nernst equation. E is equal to E naught RT over NF into lin of Q, where 
R is gas constant, T is absolute temperature, N number of electrons involved in the reaction, F the Faraday constant, Q the reaction quotient. The redox potential is sometimes called the electrochemical version of Gibbs free energy represented by delta G. A e and E naught may be related to delta G and delta G naught respectively by delta G is equal to minus N F E and delta G naught is equal to minus N F E naught. Dear friends, before I conclude, let me summarize what we have discussed so far. The reactions involved in respiration are catabolic reactions which break larger molecules into smaller ones releasing energy in the process as they break high energy bonds. Number two, aerobic respiration is the main means by which both plants and animals utilize energy in the form of organic compounds that were previously created through photosynthesis. Number three, a major role of ATP is in chemical work supplying the needed energy to synthesize multi thousands of types of macromolecules that the cell needs to exist. Number four, the flow of electrons in oxidation reduction reactions are responsible directly or indirectly for all work done by living organisms. Thank you.